if one uses his imagination, he will see the faces of these people looking at him from the past. Who is that? Hovan as the writer? Kirakos the flourisher? Sarkis? Toros? Whoever it may be, they have all lived with the same principles in their earthly life. Do not take a lot. Do not give less. Do not lie in order to obtain wealth. Be caring. Respect your teachers. And praise your parents. The glory of the kings and the wealth garnered by the merchants are all fleeting, but these values are everlasting. These scenes are replacing now those great names and images of the past. Some Turkish TV series are being filmed in the ruins of the fort. Eight hundred years ago, in 1211, after his visit to Kilikia, German cleric Wilbren Oldenburg wrote, There are Franks, Greeks, Turks, Armenians, and other nations living here, but Armenians are the majority. The Armenians here are very religious and good Christians. They have their Pope, whom they call the Catholicos. Toros Roslin was one of those Christian believers. His canvases are currently in different corners around the world, in the most prestigious museums and libraries in Jerusalem, Washington, Baltimore, and in Matanadaran, Manuscript Museum in Yerevan. Let us follow their traces. Jerusalem. Saint Jacob Monastery. Everything here is very mysterious and untouched. Of course, these writings must have been created in a flourishing kingdom. The great manuscripts of Toros Roslin depict the orange and blue that represent the splendid kingdom of Kilikia, while the magnificent reddish fusion illustrates the beauty of the sunset. These used to be memorable times. The Armenian kings of Kilikia, the governors, nobles, and the wealthy merchants would acquire books and manuscripts from writers and painters. Couples with no heir would adapt books instead. 
and later donated them to the church. 